Hello friends, let's keep exploring interesting and socially impactful data sets, but instead of looking down, this time let's turn our gaze upwards and look at the skies. Uh, this actually could be interesting if you have kids, if you have young ones, as a way of exposing to the power of Python by using the magic of space. Uh, it certainly fascinates a lot of people, space does, uh, it fascinates my kids, but I'm still kind of working on the Python side of things. It's actually really easy to get the location of the International Space Station. It's available through a REST API call, it's that simple, it's that cool. And actually this API call gives you more than just a location and that's what we're going to explore in this video. So a few facts, if you don't know about it, the ISS, the International Space Station, serves as a microgravity and space environment research laboratory in which crew members do all sorts of experiments from biology, physics, astronomy, whatever it feels they they you know whatever comes up um, it's basically a research laboratory in outer space uh, it's a joint project between five participating space agencies nasa for the united states um roscosmos for the russia JAXA for Japan, ESA for Europe, and CSA for Canada, and they also have treaties with other countries so everybody can participate and do, you know, run some experiments in this phenomenal, uh, phenomenal research lab in space. Interesting facts, fun facts, it was launched two decades ago on November 20th, 1998, and it's going to operate until 2030. It has two bathrooms, one gymnasium, and one 360 degree bay window. Wow, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to go there and just take a peek? It orbits at 15.5 times around the Earth per day, so super fast, actually 4.791 miles per second, and that's fast enough to go from the Earth to the Moon and back in under a day. And so far, some 230 people have visited the space station. So welcome to the Valmel Show. My name is Manuel Amunategui. Uh, I'm the host of the ML Show, but also uh, the teacher who's been, you know, teaching people how to port ML to the web since 2013. We got to free ourselves from, you know, uh, being limited by Jupyter Notebooks and kind of sharing our work to the entire world through the web so that people who don't know about statistics or Jupyter Notebook can enjoy this type of work. Sign up for my newsletter right here in the middle of the page so you can get access to my newsletters and my free classes, actually classes on porting ML to the web if, if, if you're interested in that, and I recommend them. Uh, also, you know, give the video some thumbs up, you know, share it with your friends. Uh, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel. It's always good to get that feedback that people are appreciating this. This is five minutes for data science. So I'm going to turn the timer on right now to kind of keep this, uh, you know, timed and short. Um, and like I said, a lot of the information comes from Wikipedia, what I just shared. And just put International Space Station. You can get plenty more information. And there's also this gorgeous picture of the space station, what it currently looks like. As you've seen, it's constantly being upgraded. This is what it looks like right now. It has capacity for six people. Uh, they have to work out two two hours a day in order for their muscles not to get atrophied. That's what's really interesting. And you're going to ask, you know, who are these astronauts who are there right now? Great question. It's a, actually a segue into the code. The code is there. The link is there. Everything you need to, to you know, participate is there. And um, it's very simple. It's a uh, it's a very simple REST API call, like I mentioned. Uh, all you have to do is call api.open-notify.org. Actually, here is the, you know, the site. Go to open-notify.org if you want to get more information about what it offers. And to do it in Python is super easy. You simply import requests. You call this, you know, you get the request.get, pass it the URL, and collect information. And then, you know, uh, and then we can do our, we can do information.json to see what comes up. And let's see, let's run this. And look at that. We get six, here are the, here are the six uh, people who are currently on the space station, and you have their names. So really cool, very simple to do in Python, and hopefully trigger some ideas of what you could do. Maybe tie that with the bios on Wikipedia, for example. So what we want to do really is to get the location of the space, uh, the ISS uh, station, uh, on a map. That's what we're going to do. And let me show you a final. Uh, this is a final port to the web. So this is not what we're going to do here today, but the concept is the same. You push the button right, and you see where it is currently. Remember, it's going around the Earth at 15.5 times per day. So this position going to change a lot. It's actually a lot of fun to do. Uh, we're going to do a simpler version, uh, but we're but more or less the concept is exactly the same. So we're going to let's import a few libraries, import pandas, and I'm going to import this map I found, this satsig.net. They have this cool lat long uh, map where uh, it's it, that's very important to understand because. Uh, uh, you know, the 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 it, it has a scale, a positive and negative scale on both the the, the x and y axes. So the x axis has a longitude, and you can see in the middle the zero, and it goes positive to the right and negative to the left, going plus 180, negative 180, and latitude does the same thing, plus 90, plus negative 90. So if you wanted to do a translation to pixels, that's what we're doing here. Uh, you'd have to know that. Thankfully, we're not going to do that in this video. We're going to keep it short, so we're going to ignore this uh, translate geo to pixels. Instead, we're going to jump to this. Uh, get space station location. And it's super simple. Instead of calling what we did here before was called a function called astros.json. Now we're going to call iss-now.json. And then we can just simply paste it into a, a browser 
and this is what we're dealing with. We get ISS underscore position, it's a dictionary, JSON dictionary, and we have the latitude and longitude, including a timestamp, and we're interested in these two, right? Uh, the longitude is negative 80, so if you go back to the map, right, negative 80 on the longitude, so you know you're somewhere around here, and um, uh, latitude is 31, so we're in a positive, so you know, let's say we're somewhere around, around here, right? Uh, and that's that's how you that, that, that and because it goes around 15.5 times per day, uh, you know it's going to change this changes pretty fast. So we're going to create a function to get it, so we can quickly just simply call this function, and it's going to get this information. And we're also then going to uh, translate because these are strings coming from JSON. Uh, we want to make sure they're floats, uh, so we can pass them to the map. So we're going to convert them to maps to floats, and we're also going to uh, you know print them out. And the way we do it, so the JSON returns. This is a JSON dictionary. So we're going to say, give us the ISS position. So here we're looking at, give us this, you know, this field, right? This name. And then you have to access either the longitude or latitude. And we're going to want them. We're going to want both, of course. So ISS underscore position, longitude, ISS underscore position, latitude. And that function is now going to give us that information. We're going to use base map because they have beautiful uh, maps of the earth. Uh, you'll, you may have to install some information to get that if you want to try base map. And this is the information there that you, that you need to do that. So we're going to import the, uh, the base map and uh, matplotlib. And now we're going to get this uh, we're gonna get the um, the location of the space station. So we don't don't worry about this. Actually, I'm gonna remove this. We don't need it for for this, for this exercise here. Um, and here, let's just do it this way. Actually, no. You know what? We don't need this. I'm gonna skip because we have 34 seconds, so we don't need it. So what we need here? Okay. So I'm going to uh, set up my uh, my plot. And I am going to, this is a base map stuff, so I'm gonna skip it. What's important here is this function called get space station location. And if we do it here, look at this, look at this here. You just call it, and now it's gonna give you the current location, negative 74 and positive 25. And that's simply we're passing that location to the map as a scatter plot right here, right? And then we're gonna print the title. So let me run this before time run out. And there you go, perfect. I wanna kinda of get this under. Uh, five minutes. So we call right. So I called base map. I passed it. You know the uh, uh, this is important to get to kind of the base of the Earth. You want to get an Earth map, right? We want to get the background of the Earth. Otherwise, we could have just you know plot it on a straight matplotlib. But we want to get that background of the Earth, and that's something that base map gives you, and that's what you want. So you got to tell it right. This is this is kind of the size of the map that you want, uh, and kind of the coloring of it. But this is all base map stuff. I'm not covering that here because base map is pretty cool. It's pretty powerful. But again, right, we got the location, longitude and latitude, and we simply pass it. The m dot scatter, m is our plot, base map, and we passed it, and we said the size of the dot, 200, so that's the blue dot that you see here, that's the size, and the alpha, you know, and the color, that kind of stuff, and then we put a title. So here it is, right? Here is the International Space Station, currently live, and if I run this again, there it is, right? So you keep running it, and it, it eventually kind of slowly moves, it will move right. Remember, it's going 15, 15 uh, uh, times, 15.5 times around the Earth, so it's going to move uh, on occasion. So um, again, this is this 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 whole exercise is eventually going to end up being a port to the web. This could be more interesting because you're going to be able to share that with people to find out where uh, you know where the space station is. And as I, normally as I end my shows, I like to kind of plug my school. So let me go to viralml.com. Um, go to the school button right here. And here you have my three tracks I offer, the machine learning track, market analysis track, and the entrepreneur track. So, you know, anything that's of interest you can do. You can even get the screw bundle pack, which will give you all the classes in one go. Uh, let's click on the uh, machine learning. Um, here, this is the free class I have, the first course in a three course series. Uh, and you simply need to sign up. Even if you're already on part of my newsletter, just sign up, put your email address there, and you'll get access to this class. It's really good. It's a, it's a stock market uh, uh, stock market uh, web application that we build, um, and I recommend doing it. And if you like it, then you can go into these bigger, way bigger courses with you know hours of videos and plenty of different types of ports to the web using different technologies, things like Ajax, things like NLP, uh, to kind of get you exposed and to then teach you and hopefully push you to kind of create great uh, applications uh, uh, on the web so the entire world can enjoy them and also start your own business if you want to start a business. Um, this is part of what we covered here, our part of, uh, uh, let's see if it has moved here.
No, it doesn't seem to be moving much. Uh, what we've covered here is um, um, uh, data sets, uh, you know, socially impactful data sets. This can be part of an, um, my next book, hopefully coming out in February, about a series of, uh, you know, I think are really cool um, data sets that could have some social impact. And, and I want to encourage people to build cool tools around it, such as weather, such as uh, poverty, such as electricity, such as space, and these kind of things. And hopefully build cool tools and, you know, make our world a better place. Thanks for watching.